Hello, everyone, and welcome to John Redman, Power of Attorney, the show that aims to empower you through knowledge of the law. I'm attorney John Redman. And hello, everyone. I'm Shauna Sanford. Welcome to the show. Well, last week, we started a great conversation about the basics of doing your own legal research at the Law Library of Louisiana, located in the French Quarter. It's a great place to get started. Today, it continues. There are quite a few resources available to anyone and everyone. Georgia Chadwick and Fran Norton from the Law Library of Louisiana are joining us again to talk about what their library has to offer and what you can do on your own to look into a variety of legal issues. That's right, and they'll be with us in just a few moments, but before we bring our guests back on, for folks who weren't with us last week, talk a little bit about how easy or difficult it is for people who don't have a law degree to do legal research. Well, um, it's really much harder than you might think because um, experienced attorneys, whenever they have to do legal research, um, they could spend many hours trying to get to the bottom of a legal question. And so if you are not an attorney or an experienced paralegal, you're really going to have challenges. And as you uh, heard from our last show, um, most law librarians are smart enough to know they can't give you uh, legal advice right. because um, it can lead to a whole host of problems. It could be a misunderstanding or you get the wrong legal advice. It could get them in a lot of trouble. Mm -hmm. um, the bottom line is it's very difficult if you don't have experience, but we'll talk more about that today. Look okay. Forward to it. Coming up next, law librarians Georgia Chadwick and Fran Norton from the Law Library of Louisiana. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the show. Well, more and more people are handling legal disputes on their own, and, and fortunately, there are some resources out there to help you put your case together. Once again, we are happy to welcome Georgia Chadwick and Fran Norton from the Law Library of Louisiana to help guide us through what is available. The Law Library is open to the public and is a great resource that we're going to learn more about right now. Georgia and Fran, thank you both for being with us. We had a great discussion last week. Now mm -hmm. let's continue the discussion. That's right. Um, one thing we just touched on at the tail end of last week's show, and we want to continue today, is this access to justice. Um, it's, it sounds like a really noble concept. Why don't you tell us a little bit more? Tell us what it is. Well, certainly. Um, in her speech to the legislature, Chief Justice Johnson stated, a jurisdiction may have the most advanced court system and greatest jurists in the world, but if it's not accessible to all citizens, it is flawed. And so we're working with some individuals from the Louisiana State Bar with an access to justice program to help train librarians throughout the state and involve judges as well into helping self-represented persons figure out how to go about going to court. So the idea is um, trying to bridge the gap from uh, a library that can only point you to the law books to uh, empower individuals to get a little bit more help than just uh, being pointed in the direction of the, the statutes and the laws, correct? Correct. Uh, librarians hopefully will be able to show a person how to use revised statutes, how to use rule books for different courts, how to find certain websites that will provide information to them. They're also establishing some self-help litigation centers where currently the Ninth Judicial, Ninth Judicial District has one that has a wealth of information for self-represented persons, as well as forms just for that district. Where is the Ninth Judicial District? Is that North Louisiana? It's an excellent question. <laughs> it's escaping me at the moment. <laughs> That's okay. We can put it on our website later on. Um, and hopefully they, they can be accessed uh, remotely, so if there's resources available. But but that's something we can research at, um, we've hopefully been by the time the show airs. Monty Moller and uh, Michael Shackman from the State Bar, and they've made us aware of issues, of course, for instance, um, very sparsely populated parts of the state um, um, have, you know, few lawyers. I mean, it's not, it's not even, you know, it's a different ball game than it is in New Orleans or this part of the state. So they're trying to, um, you know, give access to people throughout the state. Right. And, and hopefully they'll be, the local librarians be working with local attorneys in that district. And maybe one day a month or two, they can bring in local lawyers to discuss certain topics mm -hmm. to whoever wants to come in. Mm -hmm. And, and, and order, offer some pro bono or free mm -hmm. uh, legal services to individuals who can't otherwise afford free legal care. Correct. I and think that's a wonderful idea. Go ahead. In that situation, um, they may ask them to sign a simple waiver 
because they're just offering general guidance. They're not actually representing the person. And when you talk about the fact that the law library is open, um, we've said this before, that it is open to the public. Who are you referring to when you say the public? Well, we're primarily there for the court. Um, they're our primary client, is to help them with their information needs. So when we say public, we're really talking non-core employees, which would be members of the bar and regular public. Okay. And one of the reasons that we have, um, that we serve the bar, is that in the, the bar used to have a very large library in our building when we were in the 19, or you know, 10, and, and I think it was in the 1930s, they, they couldn't keep the library up, so they sold it. So the library was actually open, I think, till 10 o'clock at night to uh, help bar, you know, members of the bar, you know, research and prepare for their cases. And think about that in the 1930s, just books. I mean, there's no remote access, no online access. Mm -hmm. So that, that was the, the seed for our connection, you know, with the bar. Of course, mm -hmm. the bar has many, um, you know, fast case. They have all kinds of uh, tools for, for their members. but. We're still there if they want to come in and use the library. And people should not be intimidated uh, to come not knowing anything about the law and maybe wanting to learn more about the law. You know, and they may feel like, I don't know if this is a place uh, where I should be, but in fact, uh, it, it is. We try to think of ourselves as friendly. Um, <laughs> you say friendly to me. <laughs> I <would> agree. <laughs> uh, we can show individuals um, areas that they need to research, but we can't offer um, specific fact-based guidance. And, and you mentioned names briefly, and I want to make sure we emphasize that Monty T. Molaire, who's the Director of Access to Justice, that program, and Michael W. Schachtman is the uh, Access to Justice Self-Represented Litigation Counsel. Uh, Monty and I go way back. We were in law school together. He's an old friend, and please give him my best regards. Monty, if you're watching, best regards to you. <laughs> um, hats off to these gentlemen. I mean, they're doing really great work trying to help uh, access to justice really reach as many people as possible and obviously hats off to you guys because you're working with those those other folks and everybody uh, everybody on the team there um, and uh, hopefully this program is gonna is gonna grow and grow and certainly uh, Chief Justice Burnett Johnson uh, one of the big proponents of this program uh, she's a she's just just an amazing lady and a historic figure in our legal system um, so what's what's next with access to justice? What, what's uh, you said in the Ninth Circuit? It's uh, already uh, that's Correct. that's already having real effect there. We're looking to see more of that here in the Southeast Louisiana area. Uh, what we hope to do is expand that throughout the state of Louisiana. Um, it's a great website that has forms tailor made for that jurisdiction, procedural advice tailor made for that jurisdiction. What we'd love to see is that kind of a website spread throughout the state for each judicial district. Mm -hmm. um, also, we have a self-represented clinic here in civil court where two afternoons a week, folks can sit down and get general advice from volunteer lawyers. It'd be wonderful if we could spread that throughout the whole state. Mm -hmm. And you know, lawyers shouldn't think that self-represented folks are taking away my business. Because in many cases, these are folks who have absolutely no money whatsoever. And it's women looking for help with protective orders or simple divorces or child custody. And they don't have money to go to court, let alone pay an attorney. Well, on that note, um, suppose there's some attorneys, and, and I hear a lot of attorneys are, are tuning into this show, uh, attorneys out there who want to volunteer some time to help. Do, how, do they, how do they contact Access to Justice? Is there a, a um, can they contact your office to, to, to find out more? We would be happy to provide them with that information, right. or they could contact Monty directly. All right. Is there? Can you give a phone number uh, for them to call? Anybody uh, well, watching the, the show? Any lawyers watching the show who'd like to volunteer for access to justice? Volunteers in time. Main number for the bar is five six six one six hundred. Area code five zero four. Five zero four five six six sixteen hundred. For any lawyers out there who want to join in this very uh, honorable effort. And they'll point them to probably to the CDC. Uh, program, the clinic there. One other um, um, initiative of the Law Library, Fran just recently uh, went over and did a program for the New Orleans Public Library. And could you tell us a little bit? Yeah, that, please. Certainly. About that. Um, many public libraries will have um, Louisiana Revised Statutes. They'll have some books on procedure. But librarians feel they, they don't understand the difference between getting, say, reference advice and legal advice, and so they may refrain from that. So we're trying to reach out and train librarians that 
how these are the documents available. This is how they work, and you can go ahead and help individuals with that. Mm -hmm. They can also refer them to different websites that provide authoritative legal information. Uh, one of those is LouisianaLawHelp.org, and it's part of LawHelp.org, which is for all 50 states, and it provides basic information on custody, divorce, landlord, tenant, anything that the, the small individual may want to do. But as you pointed out before, different jurisdictions, there are big differences Correct. there. And so whatever you it is You can that go in and put in your parish, okay. and you may get a list of agencies that can provide you help, uh, as well as legal information. Okay. Well, we'll, uh, we'll want to get those website addresses from you again, and we'll put it on our, our show website so people can, uh, if you're not able to write that down, <laughs> uh, listening to the show right now, go to our show website, and we'll put that information uh, on there. Of course, something like Law Help is sort of the, the opposite of us. I mean, we have a physical, you know, walls and collection, and they are only virtual. And so that is something you can do in the middle of the night or, you know, uh, yeah, when you're not at from work. From your or laptop, or yeah. from your computer, wherever right. you are, you can access that website and get a lot of good information. So that's kind of a good uh, compliment to us. Yeah, and just so that people are very clear, the Initiative Access to Justice initiative is not for the public, but it is to train librarians to better help the public Correct. access the system. And also to pull in Louisiana attorneys to work with local libraries. Mm. Um, they may go in and give presentations at the library on whatever area they specialize in, mm -hmm. whether it's divorce, um, protective orders, or simple landlord-tenant issues. Yeah, and I'm just curious, John, as a practicing attorney, um, how are attorneys looking at services like this um, to better help the public represent themselves? Well, I think if they're worth their salt, then they should be 100% in support. And I've, and I've done a lot of pro bono seminars, too, and that's one of the missions of this show, is to put this sort of information out there for the community because so many people out there they cannot afford lawyers they need the help our law clinics are doing everything they can to try and help people but many of them can't get to everybody some people they they don't meet the poverty level restrictions so they don't qualify for the law clinic help but they really don't have the money to pay lawyers so if we can give them a lot of this information and help them understand their rights then they're well on their way to avoiding the problems and we've also done shows about mediation and how people can go see mediators who are licensed attorneys, experienced in the areas, to help people resolve a lot of their issues like domestic child, um, child custody disputes. Uh, a lot of that's on this show, on our past episodes, um, but uh, we welcome you guys back to help uh, talk further about this too. But, um, but anyway, I, I think it's a wonderful idea. Okay, all right, well, we have to take a break. So coming up next, we're gonna get to your questions for our guests, stay tuned. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back to the show. Time now to get to your questions for our guests. And we have with us Fran Norton, who's the head of public services at the Law Library of Louisiana and Georgia Chadwick. She's the director of the uh, library there and uh, lots of really, really great information that you've been giving us. One of the things that we were talking about, and of course this whole show has been about the fact that, you know, a lot of people do want to represent themselves in court. The li law library there is open to the public to go and uh, research, do legal research, but as we have have learned here it's a very big undertaking and not something that folks should take lightly but let's talk a little bit about who cannot represent themselves Fran well anyone with a complex I complex issue should never represent themselves and then sometimes you find people go online they think they can save themselves money they may incorporate their business because they think it will help them tax wise what they don't realize is they then cannot represent themselves in court only a lawyer can represent a corporation. So they did themselves a gigantic disservice, disservice because uh -huh. they just didn't realize something that basic. Yeah, yeah let, let me uh, add to that. In other words, um, maybe uh, Mary Smith makes really delicious uh, meat pies uh, and she's making a lot of money selling meat pies. And then uh, for very good tax reasons uh, and for uh, good reasons to protect yourself from liability. God forbid somebody eats a bad meat pie and gets very sick and uh, wants to sue Mary for serving her a bad meat pie. Mary Smith incorporates herself and becomes Mary Smith Meat Pies Inc. Well, um, now Mary Smith wants to sue somebody because uh, 10,000 meat pies were sold for uh, a gigantic order 
and they didn't pay for the meat pies. Well, Mary Smith, who's a very savvy business lady, cannot represent Mary Smith Meat Pies, Inc. Mary Smith is going to have to get an attorney to represent Mary Smith Meat Pies, Inc. because Mary Smith can always be pro se, she can represent herself, but Mary Smith, not being an attorney, cannot represent a corporation, Mary Smith Meat Pies, Inc. Mm -hmm. And so it's, but it's a double-edged sword. I mean, it may be, still be a smart move if your business is making enough money to incorporate to protect yourself from liability because if if the meat pie company goes bust, Mary Smith individually is financially still secure. But she would have to get a, a lawyer to represent the company in court. Yeah. Even if the, if the company gets sued or if the company wishes to sue somebody else. Yeah. So bottom line, if you incorporate yourself, you cannot represent yourself. And I, and I want to add real quick too, um, uh, we're talking about how the law library can provide resources to help you represent yourself. Um, I am. <laughs> I, I want to emphasize very strongly. It is a bad idea to represent yourself on anything that's worth more than a hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. I just. It's a bad idea. You are going to. There are procedural issues. There are evidentiary issues. It's like. It's like trying to order off a French menu when you speak no French. You are going to get something you never asked for and you will not enjoy. And so, it's a bad idea. That's, that's my <laughs> cautionary advice, uh, that's it. That is, however, not advice that you would get if you come to the library, correct? Because you all do not advise folks. We do not give any advice whatsoever on how to proceed. Um, we are showing you legal sources, primary sources, that a uh, primary source would be case law issued by a, an appellate court. Mm -hmm. It could be statutes issued by, which are made by the legislature, or um, we have regulations put out by all the agencies we have here in Louisiana. Then we have secondary sources, which again are legal encyclopedias, treatises, restatements, things that explain black letter law. Mm -hmm. and, and as you were mentioning, the Access to Justice um, initiative helps librarians help people understand how those things work together, how to really take advantage of, that, of those resources that are there. Correct. Um, the legal system is very complex and nobody has just one single issue. Mm -hmm. And if you think you have one issue, you'll get yourself in a lot of trouble. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So we have a question here from uh, Tara, or, or I'm sorry, from Chester, who says, where can I find old newspaper articles on microfilm? Is that available there at the law library? We do have mm -hmm. Times Picayune going way back on microfilm. We also have um, access to a newspaper database where you can go online in our building and then print out copies of newspaper articles. Okay. All it's right. very interesting to do that. Fascinating. Especially yeah. if you're doing maybe genealogical research. Right. Mm. That's another good point. You said you can do genealogical research at your law library. Well, I mean, uh, considering, I guess, that, you know, that cases that people come to courts for all kinds of reasons, and so when one of those cases is appealed, the, the court record is just a fabulous wealth of information. Um, I mean, in a... Um, district court, um, but also at the appellate level, too. Yeah. So. so we're talking about regular folks coming in to use the library, but also lawyers come there to use the library. Mm -hmm. So talk a little bit about the the lawyers who come and, and what sort of a information they're able to access. Well, for there. instance, we have, um, we have a tax collection. Um, we have some uh, practicing tax attorneys who use, use our tax collection. Usually it's a, um, but you know, we have people that just come in and use the statutes that I've been in there. I've yeah. done research there. It's, it's mm -hmm. just a beautiful place. It's, it's serene. It's a gorgeous place to do research. Sometimes I just want to get away from the hubbub and, you know, uh, I have two different offices, one on the East Bank, one on the West Bank, and I'm blessed to be very busy with my practice, but sometimes it's, it's quiet, it's peaceful. If I have other business uh, in the courthouse here, I can go in there and do research and uh, I can research anything I want right on your computers there, and I can research physical books too. It's a great place to yeah, do research. Yeah, so it's proven to be a very valuable resource for you. And Absolutely, and, and, and the staff is very professional and courteous. Uh, what, if I'm trying to find um, um, some case law, if I'm trying to find something uh, that is maybe, I gotta go back a few years to try and find that case that helps me win, I can ask for the, all the help I need, and they will help me find what I'm looking for. Now, can you check things out? I can't remember. I don't know if we no. touched on that. Yeah. Um, only the the staff of the Supreme Court. 
can actually checkbooks check things out. out. Right. Okay, so um, you can be there and physically make copies right. uh, or take notes and that sort of thing, but you cannot check anything right. out. But that's that's been that way since 1838. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> quite some time. <laughs> um, okay, and we have a question from Tara. Do visitors to the library have to go through the security checkpoint at the court? They do. Everyone. Everyone, I go through a security checkpoint. <laughs> and, and our staff is very uh, welcoming as well. They're Tommy it just Anderson's. takes a minute. I mean, you yeah. know, there's, there's a lot of priceless artifacts in there. They just And I have to say, if, if um, a lot of tourists come in from Royal Street, they'll come in, and if they don't have time to come in, the security staff will tell them a bit about the building. And uh, so, you know, we're all very welcoming. Okay. Um, we have a question about the tools that are available for people at the library who are representing themselves. Now, before last week, we talked a little bit about Westlaw, um, and we also talked about LexisNexis. Are those the two major uh, forms of uh, that are available for people? Economically, they're probably the two biggest, mm -hmm. uh, but there are a number of other online providers. There's Hein Online, Walters Kluwer, Gale, uh, Lois Law, but I think those two are mainly recognized by non-practicing lawyers. Oh, I see, as the biggest uh, resources that are available for folks. And again, this is just a format issue. Um, traditionally, all legal information was in print. And then with the internet, publishers moved from printing paper to making things available online. Okay, all right. Um, and uh, and so anybody who comes there can access uh, Westlaw or, or all of these resources? Correct. Uh, members of the bar and public can use our Westlaw terminals for free. If they wish to print, then it's merely 25 cents a page. Okay. And you were saying, John, that this is something that uh, can be quite costly for lawyers. Yeah. Well, if you, uh, if you want to use Westlaw in your own practice, in your own office, and if you need to have several licenses because you have several associate attorneys, um, such as I do, um, and you buy a license for each one, be able to access it from their own computer terminal, and, which you're required to do, it can be hundreds if not thousands of dollars a month. It's worth it because it helps you have the very best research at your fingertips. It saves time and it also helps you find the best cases. And um, a point on Westlaw, we were talking about it on the break, is um, and for people who aren't very familiar with uh, research or you're considering uh, maybe going into doing legal research, working as a paralegal uh, or a law clerk, um, w one of the beauties of computer research is you might have a statute or a code that's relevant to your case, your ticket, whatever you want to research. Westlaw will find all the appellate decisions or other cases, even at the trial level, that interpret that law and it helps explain what the courts have interpreted. And um, you can use the court interpretations and apply those to the specific facts of your case. And so it's very helpful to lawyers. It's helpful to the law clerks who are assisting the lawyers and the, and, and the paralegals who assist the lawyers. And it can help determine, and you argue to the judge later on, why you should win or uh, your case or why the other side should lose. And I imagine and that's there's why a lot Westlaw of is very valuable, an invaluable yeah. tool in, 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 in software like that. And, and just personally, I prefer Westlaw for case research, but if you're looking at a statute, I prefer the paper codes. And we have all 50 states. Merely because if you go to the Louisiana legislature website, they will have statutes available there. But it's just the black letter law. Mm. And it's not even the official law. Mm -hmm. But if you go to the statutes in print, you have the statute, then you'll have historical notes, um, case uh, reference researches, as well as abstracts of all cases dealing with it, and it's right there in front of you. Well, you said something interesting, and we're coming near the end of the program, but you said oftentimes people think that the law is black and white, but it really is gray. Talk Correct. a little bit about um, that. Most people think that law is like a big quilt, and as time goes on, more and more patches are added to it. And in reality, law is conflict resolution. Um, going back from time immemorial, it's how do we solve a dispute between these two individuals? Mm -hmm and then it builds upon that. And people don't realize this law is not uniform. For example, in the federal sphere, if two corporations want to merge, you may have uh, the SECs involved, antitrust divisions involved, FCC. All these government agencies themselves may have a dispute. And so nothing in law is black and white. Everything is gray in an argument. Well, we're going to have to let that be the last word. Thank you both so much for being here. I've learned a lot. And uh, I am definitely coming to visit the <laughs> Law Library. <laughs> that is all the time that we have for this episode. But be sure to tune in next week for another great show. And don't forget to send us your questions and your comments.
Thanks so much to our guests and to all of you for watching us every week. Keep your questions coming and be sure to visit us online at johnredmondpoa.com. Have a great week and be sure to join us next time on John Redmond Power of Attorney.